when all of us get together. That's awesome. Okay, uh, welcome and introductions. Um, today we have, I just had a complete senior moment. Okay. Jade, the Carney Park and Rec, I'm so sorry. Um, and uh, she, she's here to visit with us a little bit about uh, some of the opportunities that the BSA has with the Park and Rec and some of the opportunities there. Um, and then also, I think that uh, I think that no, that's about it. That's cool. That's awesome. So um, recognition, Scott. Uh, again, Eric needs to give us a list of birthdays, yes. but I, I because do. he can call that from the records. But anyway, anybody here have a special occasion that's happening in the month of February? I have one. Sam Hayes, Eagle Scout from Troop 136, oh, yeah. is having his Eagle Court of Honor this Sunday. So that's awesome. Trevor Payne's away. Yeah, Trevor Payne's is the next weekend. <laughs> or two weekends away. That's awesome. Mr. Dana. I have to go back. What? Two o'clock. And it'll be up here. But this is exactly what we wanted this time to be for. Recognize special occasions, mm -hmm. Eagle Court of Honors, everything. So let us know and, and we'll make sure people know uh, these, these important occasions. So it's the 105th anniversary of Boy Scouts of America this month. So 105 years old. Awesome. So that's like. Ken, well, so he Ken, just Ken ruined the next one. <laughs> <question. laughs> wow. Um, separately, though, uh, many of you weren't here last month and we're just trying to do some fun things uh, again we're Josh and I have decided we want to for better or for worse model our roundtables just like you would a troop meeting so that's why we have our pre-opening activities that's why we have our different programs pieces the invocation and, and, the, and the closings um, and uh, oftentimes we like to recognize when people are helping and doing good things and that's what these are for mm -hmm. and so you basically have a little uh, recognition, uh, scrap beads, whatever. I know your troop uh, did the beads a lot. You see them stringing from here down about their feet sometimes. Uh, Safety hazard. And so uh, I think a few people might have come in that haven't got these yet. And so uh, we would like to. 
So, Todd, there you go. A nice patriotic star for the plan. You got where they got. You got yours. Did you get your you got one? Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. And then Mark for when you do your two minute kill drill. Maybe he hasn't done it yet. Maybe we should. Well, we, we, scouts are trustworthy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then participation, part, and participation beats for just showing up. Also, we had. Um, hello, Melinda. We also, uh, during our planning meeting, uh, decided that we wanted to give special awards uh, at the end of the year uh, at perhaps our district. Uh, banquet and so for and I think we'll probably start this beginning in March but for units that at least have one person at every round table for the year the units gonna get a plaque and for participants single participants that make at least three-quarters of them throughout the year will get a recognition plaque and so we want to encourage you, especially if you can't make it, make sure somebody from your unit is here. We just want to kind of make this have a little bit of fun mm -hmm. and, and spread the information because when we share, uh, all of our units in the scouting experience for the boys are going to get better. So that, that's our kind of one of our goals as we go on. Another one of our goals. Uh, this is your round table, not Scott and I's round table we put on for you. So we really want participation like we've had today. And so we have a sign up sheet. Sign up. We'd love to see people sign up and, and months in advance. Right? Yes, we don't. We can, we can look out. We're, we, this is out to June, so this is not like short term. But you know, think about what something that you might be able to do, like a two minute skill drill. It doesn't have to be anything overly elaborate. It's just a real quick, fun thing to do. Quick information sharing thing. Uh, invocation, flag ceremony, just different ways to be involved with roundtable and contribute. And, help make our district's roundtable be more successful. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on here, yeah. be on this mic. Um, okay. Uh, among our other goals, uh, and uh, Josh and I set personal goals as part of this being roundtable commissioner. We want to visit, or try to visit by May, every single unit in the committee meetings in the district and so you'll probably be getting phone calls from us so that we can get dates and time to come visit you and talk about this. Um, we really want to start building the attendance here to make this a great round table. This can be a very powerful tool for you guys but we got to have people here to make it really good. So Josh, you're up. Okay, last Sunday was what? Scout Sunday. So in honor of Scout Sunday, what was the first year that we observed South Scout Sunday? And if somebody can win it, or if somebody knows the answer, I've got in our own way for them if they can do it. So what year? How many guesses do I get? One. Come last let y'all start guessing. What happens if you have more than one? More than one person. First one. Yeah. First one, right? So if you know it, you gotta yell it out. Without the smartphone. No, scouts. Are, <laughs> oh, now, now, scouts are resourceful. I didn't say we could on that. I know the answer. I don't have to. Do we need the old Jeopardy thing? Oh no, but I'm gonna give it about the five. Four, three, two, one. It was 1914. <laughs> that close. That's okay, but there, we're going to have more, you know, every month we'll have a scouting historical question. So I, I say this every month, you know, it's hard to know where you're wanting to go if you don't know where you came from. So scouting has a very wonderful, colorful, exciting history in it. The founders of scouting were definitely some headstrong individuals that are very entertaining to read about, and, and the whole process is very, very good to know. So take some time and learn about the scouts' history. It's, you'll find it to be beneficial. Two minutes, Gildrill. 
Oh. You're up. Come up front, Dr. Larry. Well, he would get out of the way of the camera. Stage is yours. All right. Well, this is uh, a month that a lot of the, the Cub Scouts, are, or we most, are crossing over into Boy Scouts. One of the first skills they learn is knife and axe and sausage. Um, and probably on their first camp out, one of the first things they're going to do is earn that token chip award or, or that uh, token chip card. And so I thought I'd do a little bit of knife safety. Uh, I need a, a pocket. Oh, here, here it is. <laughs> okay. So some, some knife safety. Always keep your knife closed when it's not in use. You know you do that? You put one hand on the bottom, one hand on the blade, and you close it that way. You want to keep your fingers away from the blade, away from where it's, it's going into. So we'll close that up. Always cut away from yourself. So you take it, and if you're whittling, you, you cut away from yourself like that. Um, always keep your knife blade sharp. Watch out. Um, always uh, obey regulations about carrying knives. And we encourage the scouts to, to take their knives on campouts and activities. In fact, it's one of the uh, 10 essentials that a scout should have wherever they go. But you always want to remind them if they don't take them to school, it's not a good idea to take a knife to school, and the same in airports and some other places. So just make sure that they don't have their knives with them when, when they shouldn't have them. Um, always uh, carry your knife, uh, or never carry your knife with the blade open, so, so keep that closed. Um, never throw a knife, that's not so good. And never strike a knife with another tool. So if you're, you're trying to cut something, don't take a hammer and try to hit it with your knife. Um, never point the, or never use the blade as a pry tool. So you don't want to be lifting that because you can crack the blade and you can move your knife. I've done it, so don't do that. It's, it's not so good. Um, let's see, always uh, make sure that you've got your, your blood bubble when you, you're, you're carving or have the knife blade open. And the way they do that, is, is to, to circle around, make sure there's nobody in the area of that reach, so that in case the, you lose a, a little control of that, you're not going to injure anybody with the knife. And always keep, or always keep the blade closed when you pass the knife. What we're going to do is, is go around the room and pass this knife around. Um, when we do that, the person that's handing off the knife holds onto it until the other person says thank you, and then you release it. If they don't say thank you, you just keep holding it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that one of the rules? Don't play that. That blade locked out. No, it's not a locking blade. It's it's a regular Swiss Army knife that doesn't have a locking blade. Is a non-locking blade knife okay, or is it better to have a locking blade? Um, well, a little give and take there. A lot of the knives are manufactured with locking blades, probably a little bit safer. Some of them are a little tricky to actually close. Um, most of the Swiss Army knives, uh, like the pocket knives, don't have locking blades, but the advantage is they've got a lot of other tools. A lot of the locking blades, thank you, um, are just single blades, and that's, that's kind of a little bit of dis uh, a disadvantage. So. All right, great, thanks. Thank you. And that brings us to tidbits, and we're just going to, since she's been so patient waiting for us to do all of our goofy stuff, uh, we'll have Jade uh, come and talk to us uh, about Kearney Park and Rec. All right. So we'll vacate the camera again. There's a camera right there. For our Apple viewers. Okay. Well, I am talking about some summer programs, and then we also have a couple programs that are up and coming. So. Um, our summer brochure will be released on Friday, April 10th, and that will have all of our summer programs in it. What I'm passing around now is just a preview of all the programs that we do have going on for the summer. Um, the dates are, normally all of our programs are consistent throughout the summer, so the dates stay the same. Um, but we haven't established, technically established dates on all of these yet. So there's not necessarily dates on there, but um, these are the programs that we do offer for the summertime. Um, a couple things I just wanted to highlight on was the Central Nebraska Track Meet. Uh, for those of you that may have participated in the Hershey Track Meet, it's being discontinued. So they replaced that with a run, jump, and throw program. Um, 
we decided as a park and recreation department that that recreation track meet is really something that we need to keep in the community because it offers that recreational experience for those that do want to participate in some type of track meet. So we decided that we wanted to keep that and we actually first started partnering with the Hastings Park and Rec and Grand Island Park and Rec and it was just going to be the three of us. We talked to some other park and rec departments such as York and North Platte and they wanted to join in on it. So um, each of those five park and rec departments are going to host a, a recreational track meet pretty much very similar similar to the Hershey track meet. It's going to, we did lower the age, it's going to be from 8 to 13 year olds. Um, and then we're going to have a state meet from that. So we'll each hold our own track meets and then the top four qualifiers in each age group in each um, event will then advance on to the state track meet which this year is going to be held in Grand Island. So we're pretty excited that we're actually partnering with some area park and recreation departments and glad that we have the opportunity to continue that recreational track meet because it is pretty popular. Um, we get over 100 kids normally that participate in, on a Saturday morning or Saturday morning afternoon. So um, really glad that we got to keep that around. Um, for some of you, I'm sure you all know about Heritage Day. Uh, it's one of our biggest events that is going to take place this summer, and it's obviously at Yanni Park. I actually talked with Eric a little bit and have been thinking about uh, possibly having some Boy Scouts come and volunteer and help out with some events. We have a family fishing day that the Nebraska Game and Parks comes out and helps us with, which I thought would be a great, uh, great thing for some Boy Scouts to volunteer with if they wanted. And then we also have kayaking that Cabela's comes out and has their kayak test drives with them. So um, those are some events that are going to be happening. And then for those of you that don't know, we have a bunch of events going on, character artists, we have inflatables, and then we end the night with um, food fair, and we have three concerts um, that are going to be happening. And then we end the night with fireworks show. So um, that's one of the big events. Um, Sue Bush Memorial Run is part of that event. Um, like I said, Family Fishing Day is part of that event as well. Um, 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 a, a, our youth recreation program, uh, we have a lot of day camps, summer day camps, and those are held at Harmon Park Activity Center. Um, some programs are held at Yanny Park, and then some, we do a week at Archway as well at the Archway. And then we also have a lot of, or we have camps at Cottonelle every single week throughout the summer. And those are for kids anywhere from four to 13 years old. Um, so a lot, our day camps are pretty popular. They tend to fill up quickly. Um, we have Camp Harmon and um, two overnight camps at Cottonell for ages nine through 13. And those camps fill up just like that. So um, a lot of fun. I would highly recommend that for um, anyone that's interested in those type of day camps. Um, otherwise, another popular camp that we just, it's going on our second year is archery camp. Um, we really just got into archery a couple years ago. Um, we actually have the Harmon, at the Harmon Park Activity Center, we have some targets down there and a net and everything. So we practice archery down there for uh, three days and then we go out to Meadowlark and shoot at that range. So that's another popular camp that tends to fill up and that's usually the second week of July. Um, otherwise, uh, we have youth sport programs as well that are pretty popular. Um, tennis programs for anyone from the age of four to adults. Um, and Troy Salisbury with Kearney Tennis Association, coaches at the high school, um, helps us with that program and he does a really great job with that. So um, some youth tennis, or youth and adult, I guess, tennis program um, is very popular. And then, um, one thing that I did want to hit on that's not necessarily summer, um, and I, I think you probably all got an e-blast about this, thank you for sending that out, Eric, but is our Crane Cash Dash. Um, it's our fourth annual Crane Cash Dash, and thank you. And it uh, is Sunday, March 22nd, and this is, event is free. And it's a lot of fun. I, I wish we would get more people to it, actually. Um, 
depending on the weather, we have anywhere from 40 to 60 people. Um, but obviously, they just uh, get different coordinates. Um, they, the teams have their GPS, and they have to go out to, we have 20 different coordinates where they go out to and um, have to get a punch or at some of them there's different activities. We've partnered with Crane River Theater and they do different activities at some of the different stations. So it's a lot of fun. They do a really good job at providing different activities. Um, and they typically go off of whatever their theme for the year is for their um, production. So they make it a lot of fun. But um, like I said, it's a free event. People can sign up on the day of. So all you have to do is show up at the Hunter Park Activity Center. Uh, you do have to have someone who can drive a car because you do have to drive around, but you must obey all traffic and speed limits, <laughs> um, traffic laws and speed limits. Um, but then you just need a GPS unit. If you can use your phone, if you don't have one, we have some GPS units available. And then you'll get your coordinates and head on out there and race and then come back to the activity center. And then we have some prizes. So um, a great event. You know, for families, for, you know, maybe some troops or something, uh, any t type of teamwork, I think it's a really good event for people to come out and participate in. I can say that if you're a fan of our fans, in the last couple of years, we have taken some prizes as well. We can pay for it because it's kind of a fan. We can turn one out to the event. So, it's fun for them. They have to Good, good. Yep, and we go all over Kearney. So, some of the coordinates this year, Cotton Mill, Yanny, Clear at the Cabela. So, we cover a, a wide wide area in Kearney, so it's a lot of fun. Um, other than that, I guess I, I didn't have anything too detailed or um, too advanced, I guess. Do you guys have any questions in regards to any of our summer programs or any of our programs that we have offered or any of the things listed there? Or want me to hit on anything else? What are doing with your uh, like conversation goals? Um, I'm gonna look at last year because we typically go off of those same dates. Um, so hunter safety, obviously we work through the Nebraska game. Of course, we just promoted for them. Um, hunter safety last year was July 15th through the 16th and August 11th, 12th, and 14th. Um, and normally those dates stay the same throughout the year, year or time of the year stays the same. And then bow hunter education was August 4th, 5th, and 7th. So more than likely those dates will stay. Just adjust to 2015. Hunter safety was July 15th through 17th. In August 11th, 12th, and 14th. Any other questions for Dave? Yeah. Go find time to play basketball or you work all the time? <laughs> I'm working all the time. I gotta go, well, kind of. I gotta go up to my fourth, uh, fourth and fifth grade basketball, boys basketball program. So I get to play with the little kids. <laughs> but yeah, I do play some still. <laughs> Thank you. Thank awesome. You and if you do have any questions or anything, um, our website is carnyrec.org and you can um, see a lot of our flyers and information on the website as well. Thank you. Eric, do you have some tidbits? I do. I have a couple of tidbits. So uh, the first one, um, we know the sport fashion here in Kearney, they are the uh, exclusive partner to the Oregon Trust Council. They're the only company that we uh, uh, get all our camp t-shirts and everything with. So for the next three years, we have a three-year agreement with them. So the next three years, anything you see that has been screen printed, um, you know, is their handiwork. So, so hopefully it's uh, good quality. Um, they are the only approved local uh, uh, vendor to use the BSA logo. So um, if you want to get Pack with your t shirts done locally, they're the company to go through and um, have a, a shit pot stand in front of They're a great company to work with. A um, couple other things, um, I'll just leave them up here, um, or, or I guess I guess you could pass them around. Um, I know not everybody's going to want one, um, but I have uh, uh, advancement reports from 2014 for PACs uh, and troops. Uh, there's also crews on here, but, to, but most of our crews don't do any, do any advancements. So um, if, if you'd like 
uh, take a look at these. If there, if you think there's some numbers off, which I think there are, um, let me know. We can get you a detailed advancement report by OA, um, and we can get some updates because uh, uh, some of these kind of worry me where we don't have very many advancements for some of the kids. Um, so um, I don't know, we'll, just, we'll just leave them right here to so make sure to pick these up. Um, and then the uh, last thing I have, uh, commissioners, I know we have several in the room. You guys already have one of these. So um, I have the uh, draft of our district calendar uh, for the year, for 2015, 2016. Um, so please take a look at this. This will be the last opportunity uh, for your input and feedback. Uh, if you have any suggestions uh, for our district volunteers, uh, let me know uh, so that we can uh, wrap this up and get the new calendar produced, which playing right now, barring uh, any unforeseen circumstances, we'll have a new uh, program guides ready and available at roundtable next month for you to pick up. So please be here to pick yours up. So I'll, uh, I'll pass these around. So. Also, commissioners, there's a meeting I think this month sometime in today's section. Do okay? It's uh, February 17th at, oh, seven, at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and Josh just reminded me. Uh, uh, February 15th is the deadline for the 811 Pirate Adventure Tree Planting. Well, it's, it's a design contest to send out over a reminder out over email. Um, if your kids uh, want to participate in that as individuals, as a band, as a pack, as a troop, um, uh, if you, your design is selected, um, then your pack or troop gets a pizza party, uh, you get uh, a free tree and a free bench, and they'll bring the, it's, Done through the 811 call board, uh, the natural gas pipeline. Um, they'll bring this stuff out and they'll help you plan it. So it doesn't cost anything. So you just got to submit, submit a design. So check out the email uh, that we sent out. It went out in the council newsletter, which was sent out, I think, last Saturday. So if you need another copy of that, let me know. So all I got. Very good. Yep. Um, Matt, place Matt for one of the that. Yes. I don't know if I missed it. It's not I have them here or no, I have them. I have them here. So if you order place knots, I got them. Otherwise, I'll be right here. Thank you, Eric. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Amanda reminded me. Uh, Amanda Demilk, uh, our scout shop manager, um, uh, she's also a volunteer. So she's a, a volunteer adult right now. So if you have scout, class, scout questions, you need to talk to her next week. Uh, or to tomorrow, but anyway, she graciously brought down some scout shop items, including some Eagle Scout stuff, some blue and gold materials. Um, so please stop by and take a look at that. Some of it's pretty cool, some new stuff. So take a look at that. That's a cool Amanda. Awesome. Main program. Tag team. Tag team. All right. So tonight's topic for both the main program and for the breakout sessions is summer scouting activities. And so, yeah. how many people think about when they talk about summer scouting activities, what's the first thing you think of? Summer camps. Summer camps. Well, we're not talking about that. Yep, scratch that off the agenda. Which topic tonight has nothing to do with extended camping during the summer. So what does that leave? Everything else. Everything else. How many I mean, weeks? there's a lot of summer, and if you only camp for one week and don't do anything else for the rest of the summer, that's a boring scouting program. How many of you units or Cub Scout units, troops, are active throughout the summer? Okay. Um, <laughs> monthly activities. And those consist of what? The packs. Pack, uh, camping, fishing, uh, living in the group for three uh, all So what we thought we would use to guide our discussion is the five W's and the one H, or if you want to count the end of the one, you got another W. So we got the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So we don't want to just stand up there and tell you this. So if we're thinking about summer scouting activity that's everything but camping, what's the who? Who are we, well, who's the target here for these summer scout events? The boys? But just the boys? Families. Families, Families. absolutely. This what? is a great time. Potential recruit, freaking out, or potential recruit? Yeah. 
But at all levels. So if you're a scout unit, you'd be looking at the Cubs. Invite them to come, perhaps. Okay. So why is it so important that you have the families involved? Well, we vote for them. They're uh, unfortunately good. Okay. Why else? I think about some of the networking stuff. You know, some of the best friends, the best friends that I have in my life, I have had through scouting, either as a youth or as an adult. But you're bringing together all these people. And if you want to talk about making it easier to get people to help with little goals or final interviews and stuff, start building friendships at these type of events. That's the way to do it. Well, let's skip to when. When should we be doing this? When would be a good idea? Weekends? When else? Evenings. Evenings? Yeah, because the parents are still working, right? Does it have to be weekends or on the evenings? Weekdays too, right? What do you, so even weeknights work. Okay. That but if you're going to do this, I'd say the off season. I mean, if you think about like a pack or some troops, you know, if you think about like May to well, September ish, a lot of packs are like, you know, yeah, we'll see you in the fall. And if they do anything, it's fun with sun or a few blows, and that's, there's a lot of time frame in there for kids to get their scouting and lose that connection. So I, I would call the off season. And then a lot of scout troops, they scale back their activities in the summertime too. Not all, but some do. And uh, so that would be my win, off season. So Todd, what's 158 do? It was weekly, and it's been great. I mean, probably the first time last year that they just get a weekly event on the same night. So yeah, I'm from 158 too, but I didn't want to give the answer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically in 158, we have Monday night meetings during the school year. And in the summer, we keep meeting on Monday nights. So it's just that all of a sudden, there's not the formal troop meeting. There's not the uniforms and class Bs, and they just do fun activities. Yeah. Just it's something fun for them to do. And but the parents organize. I mean, they have one parent that organizes overall. But then the parents would say, okay, "This week I will do both races with them. This week I'll do compost. This week I'll do so." Spread that out. Here we go. We can add another W and by whom? Yeah. So your troop uh, separates, they don't have, it's a different kind of meeting in the summer? Yes, I mean, activity. We don't, we don't meet when we have a formal group meeting, but if everyone's invited to this activity, whatever it is, whether it's going to be a part of or whatever. And that's just the same reason. Correct. Yeah. So I think that's a big key, parents. Right? Because that gets going to tie back into the why, right? You're building leaders. Like, can't you just run this one event? And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're an assistant scoutmaster or a committee ch chair or an event chair, fundraising chair, popcorn colonel, something like that. So I would say one thing I would add to this list is just consistency. That they know what it is. If it's every week, if it's every other week, if it's the first and third Thursdays, the second and fourth weekends, whatever, so that you don't have to worry, oh, what is it this month? And if it's one month, it's on the Monday, the first Monday, and the next one, it's on the third Wednesday, then everybody's going to forget and you're not going to get the attendance. And having it all organized before the summer starts, especially for PAC, I guess that you just, whether people check their email, I know there's a lot of communication noise now, but it's nice that they know that ahead of time going into the summer plan as well. Well, I think that's a critical point, and that's what, when we break out with the Cubs, is 
going to be like brainstorm ideas, and then Josh has run everybody through and set up a potential schedule. I'm just going to model the process that you can have there. Okay. Uh, <coughs> what? What kind of things might you do? We've heard a few. Uh, disc golf. Fishing. Service project. A service project. That wouldn't be a bad thing to do. What are some other ideas that we could share? A water carnival. Water carnival. Okay, it could be something you put on yourself. You could go to a water park. I mean, we've got Island Oasis. You could just go to a pool and have a swim night at the pool. You know, one of the things that we just had Jay talk about, some of the activities that the park and rec is doing. And I kept hearing the same word over and over and over again. Free. <laughs> it doesn't have to be costly to do these things. It's not like it takes a tremendous amount of budget to put together a potluck or to put together a. You, know, you can make a lot of water balloons for about five bucks. And those things are great. You can have a lot of fun, you know, especially if that, well, I have a lot of water balloons, so any age. But what I well, guess, but there's a lot of opportunities, you know, don't, don't think of. You know, start looking at some of our resources. The Game of Parks is an incredible resource. Um, Game of Parks, uh, City Parks. I think the, the what is just only limited by your imagination. I mean, basically anything that you want to do, what the boys want to do. I mean, certainly at the pack level, we know that it's going to be more parents driving this. But at the troop level and the crew level, this ought to be the youth deciding what do we want to do this summer. You might, they might say what, and then the, the adults will get together. Okay, who's going to help us run this? And it wouldn't hurt to have the boys run it. What I mean, they have an activity and plan it. What guidelines would we use for limits on that? There you go. I just say scouting. That's why we won't. That's why we won't have the water pistols at the water extract. And we won't be canoeing as Cub Scouts because. Uh, have to stay with those I think one really cool event that we did uh, as our troop uh, is we had a scout triathlon. Started up at Cotton Mill at the dock. They came in waves because we only had so many kayaks, but we got kayaks, got the, the safety boats on the water and the lifeguard, and they went up and around the Far Island and back, and they got out, changed their clothes that they wanted to put on some shoes. Uh, jumped on their bikes, ran down the hike bike trail until they got to the university, jumped off, they left their bikes there, we had parents there to pick up the bikes, and then they ran all the way to Yanny from there. And they timed it in waves, so what was your fallout maybe? <laughs> they all made it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they seemed to have a good time. Oh, yeah. some of them were just amazing, amazing times. Yeah. The, the older boys, especially at the end, they started passing the wave that had started before them. So imagine how long it would take in a kayak to come up and around and back, and that's how long before the next wave started. So they they caught them. So it, it's it's some really cool things you can think about. So you kind of hit on the where parks, anywhere that you can go to. It's nice if you keep it in the city because then you don't need tourist events. What would okay. be the nice thing about Cottonmill? It's technically inside the city. Okay. What would be some of the things you'd want to consider if you yeah, would be having a family activity when you start picking locations? Age groups. Age groups. What else? I think sometimes it's you need to think about safety. You know, if you're going to take them, if you're going to take them to something clear out of Fort Carney, well, in Nebraska, you've got tornadoes, you've got thunderstorms to worry about, and so you've got to be thinking about what you're game plan is something that. That's true. What else? Activities for siblings. Yeah, all, all the siblings. Like, good, good point. What else? Do you think? But if you make it a family-friendly affair where everybody can participate, when you think of some of the logistics about the location, what 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 would you need to consider? Restroom facilities. Restroom facilities, especially because. Moms don't like to hear the trees are over there. They don't. <laughs> a lot of kids don't like that either. We can also have to consider permits. Yep. Um, you might want to hear that you know, campfire. Well, you might need to build a campfire anywhere you want. Um, another thing to think about is parking. 
we ran into that before. We got a really decent facility, and there's parking for eight cars. So it doesn't work out so well. Okay. Um, let's finish it up so we have some time for the breakouts. We hit on, I heard some of the whys, but what do we think about the whys of summer activities as we've at least presented? Fun. Um, they're fun. That's the big one. Fun, fun, fun. Because if the boys are having fun during the summer, they're more likely to come back in the fall. And I think especially for those Cub Scouts that have just transitioned to the Scout Troop, they've had a couple of months, hopefully they're going to a summer camp, but that leaves weeks on end that they may not be doing something in scouting and you can lose them. So if you have fun, that, that memories are carrying through maybe a boring scout meeting or two. Oh, I know scouts are fun. I've got camp, I did summer activities, I can deal with working, you know, going through youth protection training tonight or whatever. So um, I heard a couple of good whys on the adult side. What were some of the good whys from, from the point of view from the adults? I like the idea that, that this could also be trying to get more adults to start using volunteers. This would be a great idea to have. Because it's just a little project for them to organize. One night, hour and a half, plan it, do it. Well, maybe the next project is a fundraiser and the next project is a leadership position. I've got a lot of leaders at events like these with starting. Hi, my name is Josh. And that just takes that little bit of friendliness and all of a sudden things start happening. Well, and there's some great hobbies that people have that they love to share. And if you only have to do it one night, a fishing or I like to think the three R's and retention or three or Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. And so from the recruiting, who says that it just has to be your voice? Come bring some friends. Might be a new boy for the troop. Somebody that's never been a scout before. So all of a sudden, oh, you guys do great job. Um, I would like to talk just briefly about the journey to excellence and some of the requirements or some of the things that you can get some points on towards your journey to excellence. To excellence. Um, outdoor activities. Objective, the pack has the activity has activities in the outdoors which include outdoor pack meetings, hikes, family campouts, parades, outdoor service projects, etc. Bronze have three outdoor activities during the year. Silver have four outdoor activities during the year. And gold have five outdoor activities. And then there are also um you know talk about council camps. But then there's different camping awards a national summertime pack award these activities could apply towards. Uh, Cub Scout Outdoor Activity Awards, National Outdoor Achievement Award, National Outdoor Challenge Award, uh, National Medal for Outdoor Achievement, and Leave No Trace Awareness Awards. So there's, you know, not only can these things be fun, but we can get the voice some recognition, we can get a unit or district some recognition and help achieve some of our goals by having these activities. All right, any last thoughts before we break out? Okay, let's uh, let's see uh, how many Cub leaders do we have here? Um, that doesn't, I think we got that room too, right? Well, let's me in. So I, I, the OA is in Seekers. So. Yeah. So we have more scouters, so we get to stay here. So Fred McMurray said, follow me this year. It doesn't matter. Probably yeah, more than so. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Josh is going to lead the Cub breakout through an actual like, kind of brainstorming and planning cycle. What well, we've had planned more on the scout side is just brainstorming. Let's think about some cool ideas and share those, share some stories. Josh, should we just... Uh, 15 minutes? 15 minutes.
So at five after, we're going to come back here. We're going to the other room. Gosh, we're going on an adventure. Right. We're going on a trip. Follow me, boys. We have theme music. Well, kind of. Where are you going to stand, Josh? I'm going to stand in front of that light. Okay, let's everybody gather up a little bit here. We don't want any stragglers. We want to have an intimate little group. We're going to pretend this is the concept. We are at a PAC committee meeting. All right? And we're going to plan our PAC summertime activities. So I don't want to mess with any of their stuff, so we're going to kind of stay over on this side. With that, we look at our calendar. And if you have, you know, I'm sure your, your units have one, but in your program planning guide, it comes out. Everybody should have one of these. Every unit should have one of these. Okay? You can look at that, and down that, on that is the district calendar, council calendar. A lot of school calendar, community calendar stuff. We can look at those things and we can pick dates, weekends, evenings that won't interfere with the other activities. What are the things that we need to consider when we talk about planning the calendar? When we talk, talk about planning summertime activities, what kinds of things do we need to look at when we're going to start planning the evening and, and stuff like packs? Conflicts. Conflicts, like with what? Summer Baseball, basketball, soccer. I mean soccer. Like just there's just the, 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 the possibilities. I mean, who knows what, but you need to communicate. Did you you're okay? It's good. We're good. This is we have evidence <laughs> if you erase this. Oh my goodness. You guys are all witnesses. <laughs> All right, so what type of thing we have to consider for schedule? We have to consider conflicts, holidays, district council calendar, okay. And there's a few other things that you have to consider when you're looking at, okay, when, when are you guys, when you're participating with uh, Final Sun, are you doing Weeblos walking? Are you doing, I mean, just there's just so many different things to consider. But you have to look at your schedule. That's the first thing you got to start with. Then it goes to, okay, when, when do we want to start our summertime, outdoor, whatever activities? Do you want to start? After May, I know in our pack, we, our May activity, the graduation, if you will, we had a graduation where boys came up, we advanced them to, they were wolves, they became bears, they got, you know, their scarf, they got, you know, the book, we sent that to them. We kind of made a, a, a family event out of it, potluck, grandparents and siblings would come and, and we tried to do it outside. That was the beginning of our outdoor activities was in May. And that was the graduation. The amphitheater at Cotton Mill works awesome for that kind of stuff because there's fire pits there, lake in the background. There's a lot of opportunities for things to happen after that. So it could be a couple hour activity and kids aren't gonna get bored. So, so let, let's just say we're let's say we're gonna start in May. We're gonna continue through the summer on this. So June. July, August, and what happens in September? Back to the school. Scouts, programs kicking back up. So they miss a month. All right. So, with that, what kind of ideas do you want to have? What do you want to do? Here's where the committee starts throwing out some concepts, some ideas. What do we want to do? 
Fourth of July um, in our path, I'm in charge of uh, putting the float together for our break to make that decorating the float and that okay. Let's go float that we start with the sea visit. What else? You know, Josh, at least for my background, if you stick to things that are traditional, like the float, then you look at, okay, we're going to do an activity that might repeat it for three or four years. Mm -hmm. So that we have a multitude of activities, but by the time it comes out most of the program, we're going to have four or five different activities before we start repeating them. And that's a very good point. But there are some things that should be traditional. You know, maybe it's a float and dry parade. It's going to be hard to get attendance. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to get volunteers. When you're doing your annual pack planning, this needs to be part of it. Just, I just want to emphasize that. If you fail to plan. You fail to fail. Exactly. So when you start doing your annual pack planning, this should be part of it. But it's not too late if you've not done this. This is a good time of year to get rolling on this and we can get some people going. But so we're gonna plug these in. So in May, what do we want to do? Probably maybe have the pack graduation stuff and then along with that, maybe do some rockets. Do some rockets in May, okay. Handwriting is so awesome today. All right. Then what? June for Covenopolis. That sound fun? It was returning the Covenopolis thing with the uh, Indianapolis thing. We want to be in June with that. Okay. Same thing with the boat building, which is looking like the one for the Okay. And four. And you better got it. So now we've got this. So let's pick, let's pick one and just go through some of the nuts and bolts on it so that when we're planning this, it, this, this sounds overly simplified. This portion of this planning is this simple. Okay, get out some ideas. You know, you got this parking lot of ideas, you can write a bunch of stuff and then Maybe you have four months to do it and you have 20 ideas. Start filtering through the, oh, we did that last year. Uh, this year, you know, this, this, whatever, it wouldn't work with maybe the, the fun with some thing. Maybe it'd be a redundancy, so we don't want to do that one. Um, start voting. How many people like this one? And you, everybody can vote for each one, but eventually you're going to figure out, okay, 
More people like this one than they like this one. More people like this one than like that one. So you're going to weed out to four or five. You said you only have to have one a month. But you're going to weed out to your activities you're going to do. Then you're going to plug them in. Once they're in there, keep rolling. This is this simple, this part of it. Your committee could do this in 15 minutes. The next part of it, the actual, okay, this starts to get a little more detailed, is when you start picking out one month. Okay, let's pick May. So May is rocket building. We're going to coincide that with graduation. Ceremony, make it kind of a, all the same. Okay, so May is graduation and rockets. So let me start getting to the who, what, when, where, why, how. Where are we going to do that? Sorry? What are you going to use in the event where you have a form or you pretty much going to cover the same things? I've seen them. I've seen them. Uh, we've Every once in a while in the committee meetings, we'd have somebody who was organized and had one to fill out, but typically we just kind of, we knew, we would just go through, and it's the same questions, who, what, when, where, why, that kind of thing. And so, and, and we've been doing it in our in our PAC committee, we had enough retention and enough people cycling through the process again and again, it really went pretty smooth. So every few years we get a couple of drop out, we get a few people come in, and the process really never suffered. But I know what you're talking about. That's a really good idea. That's just basically a sheet that you plug in the information. Okay? So, May graduation. When? we got to pick a date. When are we going to do it? May 16th. May what? 16th. May 16th. All right. What time? When? Five. Let's do a meal. All right. Five. It's going to be a potluck. Okay. See how this is evolving? That's awesome. How long is this meeting going to take now? Five to eight. Five to eight. Because we're going to have graduation, the potluck, and then the rockets. You want that three hours? I've seen kids eat fast. That's what we're cooking. <laughs> well, you can graduate and eat at the same time, too. Yeah. You can do that. So, and then this is the planning portion where this is nothing set in stone. So we'll say five to eight. Now where? Well, if we're going to do rockets, we're probably going to have a fill. Are these water rockets or are these? Uh... I would say let's do water rockets simply because we don't want to burn any place down. Well, I was looking for ideas and real places to have the kids raise their own rockets. <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> Big parking lot. Um, and that's something you need to check with because sometimes, uh, like the city parks, you can't do rockets on mm -hmm. city parks. So you have to be careful about where you're planning your event. And so there's things to consider. First thing, first thing, first thing, look for safety, guide to safe scouting. What can we do? And it'll tell you in there, you can do this if you have this, this, and these requirements met. You know, in the Boy Scout site, if you're going to do a water activity, what do you have to have? You have to have water safety. Water. You have to have people that are trained. You have to have a BSA certified lifeguard. And you have to submit a float plan. Not just a tour permit. You have to submit it. And when, like we take the boys to Niagara. We are going to put in the Niobrara on this date, at this time, at this location. We will be out of the Niobrara at this location. And here's our certified lifeguard's name. I mean, it's very specific. I'm sure you get involved with some of that stuff, don't you? I've never done a boat. Really? Okay. So anyway, so where? Where are we going to do this? If we're doing water rockets, we're going to do a graduation a stage thing. I would suggest let's use the amphitheater company. Because it's a nice big open area, we could do that and towards the lake side of it. Um, are there picnic tables and stuff there? There are some, but we can maneuver some more around. Okay. Any thoughts? That's not good. I like using that because we don't have to have parks to have to do Yes, we have to. So I'm trying to hurry a little bit because we're not wanting to run too late. 
Where? Where? Okay, who? Now, hopefully, hopefully, your PACs have a summertime activity committee. You hope. It's really good if you do, because these types of events doesn't mean that, okay, the two or three people on that committee all falls on them. No. They're the ones that are kind of organizing and help leading. They're still drawing from parents for more volunteers, but they're the ones that are sitting down and making the phone calls. They're the ones that are going to be doing the footwork on this stuff. But for right now, we're the Summertime Activities Committee. So who's going to be doing it? Who's going to be in charge of it? Should it be your cup master? Why? We got a full plate. How about your committee chair? No? How about Bob's mom? Bob's mom. Did she volunteer or are we drafting her? We'll politely ask her. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're running out of time. <laughs> so, when, where, who, what, we know what we're doing, all right, we know the why, we define family activity, so, you know, and we're running out of time, so I'm going to really finish up, the, the rest of the nuts and the bolts you're looking at is, okay, who's providing the rockets, how are the kids going to get them, do we have the equipment to launch the rockets? Are we building them at the event? Because we need a lot of time for that. Are they going to build them as bins and then launch them as bins? Are they going to, there's a wide variety of things, but all of this stuff needs to be done and figured out. And like I said, the actual, this nuts and bolts portion of it doesn't have to be done during the annual calendar planning, but your summertime activity should be. That way everybody knows what's going on right out of the gate. All right, it, it's best if they have, in May, we're gonna do this. In June, we're gonna do this. But if you can pick the dates and the locations, if you can have that much done, then give it to them. When you give them the annual calendar, or at least before they leave in May, then their participation level is gonna go way through. They need to know when it's gonna happen, where, time, that kind of thing. All of the final nuts and bolts and stuff you know, can be done outside of the annual planning, but I can't emphasize that enough. This needs to be done a ways out, but it's not too late. If you haven't done this, get busy on it. And I apologize if we're running short on time, but are there any quick questions that I can answer on this? Was this helpful at all? Is this something you'd like to spend more time on in another roundtable if we get there? Because I can keep this information with us. Yes, yes. I think we need to try and have an hour long meeting type thing. Would you like to do that? Is that something that would be beneficial? An hour long committee planning meeting? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about our, our calendar for uh, roundtables, and there is a lot of planning and helping. Far enough out, a lot on the agenda already for planning, pack calendars, pack finances, pack any unit, finances, calendars, fundraising events. We're going to be talking about the next four or five months so that you will be equipped when you go to do that. You'll have that in your hands already. So let's get back together real quick. We're going on another trip. Say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Anybody else that might be wanting to watch our I know. You think Josh was flogging him in there? I was. We said, look at all the faces as they trudge back in. What are we doing over there, Foggin? I just blew their mind with information. 
No, we just got done having a committee meeting. Those are always fun. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. It is time for hot topics. So Josh had one hot topic up there, so I'll let him talk about it. Any other issues, ideas that people want to raise the group, ask for advice, just talk about that wasn't on our regular agenda? I think if you have time and want to get on just anything about the new cup program, I think that's all we can talk about. Oh, well, we got a whole yeah. next round tables on that. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our whole next. Oh, no, actually, in two months. Next month in two months. Next month is going to be basically inclusive scouting, so scouting with disabilities and bullying prevention. So there won't be breakouts. We'll just have two main programs next month. In two months, it will be all about the new Cub Scout program. Um, an overview of the entire changes as well as then our breakout sessions uh, focused for the Cub Scouts, of course, on the new program, but then for the Scout side, the implications of the new Cub Scout program on the Scout units. And so that's, that's what we're going to do in two months, and we'll go through. There is a lot of information that you can start looking out there. It's uh, scouting.org. Trust, slash trust program slash programs. Program yeah, and, and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff out on the Internet, too. It's easy to find as far as Cub Scout program changes. Go to scouting.org. Go to read the, read the official read source. the official stuff, and uh, because it just helps avoid the confusion later. But what I will say about the new program is it's really exciting. Um, easier. Yeah, it's it's easier. It, for it, the it, it's it's easier <laughs> for the adults. It's more understandable for what the kids understand easier what they're going to need to do. But it gets kids out of a then meeting where they're reading from a book and out and doing outing, things. Back and, and scouting. Yeah, they got the outing back and scouting. So it's it's really exciting and it's it's really exciting and it's gonna be fun. Bigger Eric if you want the people on the screen to read it. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Executive. It's scouting.org backslash program Updates. That's where the new stuff is. Uh, the one thing I will say uh, 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 is I wouldn't go out and buy a bunch of Cub Scout handbooks and neckerchiefs and all that good stuff at this point um, because uh, some of it's going to change. So you know, the tiger cub oven is going to change. So I just, you know, as you're getting kids here in the spring, they'll buy well, well, collectible. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think Amanda would love to sell you uh, uh, selling fifty scout American yeah. scout handbooks. So. Uh, the yeah, the only scouts that will be able to continue with their old book will be those that are in their second weeblos. Basically, they can continue to earn their arrow light using the old rules mm -hmm. for a year. But anybody else has to do the new program effective uh, July one or is it June one? June one. June one. Okay. okay. Real briefly, um, adult leader awards of knots. How many people know what the, the knots are? Okay. You know what they are. He's got wear, wearing. He's wearing two of them. Wearing two. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, it was a conversation we ha were having during the pre-opening because we couldn't remember what colors meant what. And with our awards, it's a little more uh, confusing because. You know, we are, we're so busy with so many other things in our mind, and not that we're forgetful at all. But this doesn't have a bear on it or a tiger on it, or it doesn't have, you know, it's just a knot with different colors. So it's harder to remember what they're for. But what these knots are is they're adult leader recognitions. This is, these are the same things that we've done. And why would that be important for adult leaders to wear their recognition on their uniforms? Example for the scouts. That that lifelong learning message that we're trying to teach our kids doesn't stop when they turn 18 and they're no longer able to be a Boy Scout, or when they turn 21 and they're no longer able to be in a venture crew. You know, and it's it's a continuation. And there are a, a wide variety. Of, um, I saw an application for one earlier. Did you have an app for a knot over there? Did you? 
Can I borrow that for a second? It's amazing how many of the knocks for regular leaders that you learn part of it by coming to round table. These are foldable. And you know, there there are different advancement requirements that the adult leaders have also. There's different things that we have to accomplish. Um, this is for the Scout Master Progress Record. And it was complete the Boy Scout Fast Start training, complete new leader essentials, complete Scout Master Assistant, Scout Master specific training, complete youth protection training. So this may not be in order. <laughs> but complete introduction to outdoor leader skills. Um, earn the Boy Scout Leaders Training Award. Conduct troop leader training three times. And participate in one supplemental training course, either a local or council, national, or national level, which would badge, would cover that requirement. Participate as, in a, as an adult in a youth leader training by either serving on the staff or attending the Scoutmaster Orientation se Session for the National Youth Leader Training Conference. So there's very specific things and there's dates, just like in the, in the kids' books. There's dates and there's places it has to be signed and approved by. Who would approve that? Committee chair. It's not the Scoutmaster. Not the Scoutmaster. He didn't approve his own. But there's, there's, and, and there's a lot of units that don't do these things. You see a lot of people that don't have knots in their uniform, but they've been scouting a long time. And I'll tell you, personally, my entire Cub Scouting career, I didn't worry about it. You know, I was a Cub Master, Den Leader. I didn't worry about the knots because it's, it's not for me. And that's a common thing. It's not for me. It's for the boys. I'm not going to worry about it. Well, the point that it clicked to me, because we tell our kids, you know, this uniform, the Scott's wearing, tells a story. So that's his scouting career on his shirt. That talks about what he's done, what he's achieved, where he's at. It, it's no different for us. And we were at, I don't remember, at a Camp Rhee or a Bloom Gold Banquet or whatever. I had one of the younger scouts come up to me, and he's looking at my uniform, and he's looking at, I don't remember who it was. I think it was probably Rod Merge, because he has like nine knots across this shirt. And he said, well, he must be a better leader than you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I never thought of it that way. Because my uniform is telling a story to that kid. Who am I? He doesn't know my name. He walks up, and he looks at my uniform, because that's what he does to his fellow scouts. And it's like, maybe I should wear my recognition because that tells my story as a leader. And it's just, you know, I'm a scout. I may not be 11, but I'm still a scout. And this tells who I am. So if you're not doing adult leader recognition in your units, all this information is online. You can go to the, the, the council website, and I don't remember the link to it, but you just start, I think it's through a train. Go to the national. Go to national. Um, go to national on this, and you can print these off. And I would I would recommend committee chairs, advancement chairs, start carrying these things. And, and you want you want your you want to award your leaders. Yes, sir. For adults that were scouting as a group. Uh Eric can correct me if I'm wrong, but Arrow of Light and Eagle Scout. There's my Arrow of Light. There's your Eagle Scout and your Arrow of Light right there. Dog and Country. Dog and Country can also transfer. So, so you know, it's just. It's just a conversation starter, like you said. People will walk up to you and say, what's that? <laughs> you must not be as good a leader as him. <laughs> <laughs> How many did you wear at one time? What's that? How many of those knots can you wear? I think your your. I think the uniform code says nine. six. Yeah, Eric, would be better. There is no official limit, but at some point in your ridiculous run out of space. <laughs> back, so I'd say limit of like three, four. You start hours. looking like an admiral in a foreign navy or something. And there is no order in one new order. However, there is a correct way to square the knot. So, but Josh, you've got one on your your uniform. You actually didn't you didn't earn. You didn't work for it. You actually were recognized for it. What did it tell us about that knot? And I hear there's a couple people learning that are going to be getting Do they know this already? Yes, they do. Okay. Well, we should have done that during recognition, so that's okay. This is the District Award of Merit. 
And uh, this is something that you can't earn, that you have to be nominated for. And then there's a committee that reviews the nominations and they have to be voted. Um, there's It's a process. Um, there are letters of recommendation, and it's a pretty lengthy thing, and it's a pretty, pretty great honor to have won this. This one's the silver. It's the one that's the different. It's not a square round. Silver, silver, and there's another one that's not earned. It's an adult who's earning a year for us to win the same company. It has to be awarded a different one. But along along with that. Mr. Dana Ernest and Kevin Reeser to stand up. At our district dinner, these two fine gentlemen will be awarded the district award. So I Good job, David. Very cool. It doesn't stop when you're when you're not a youth. This is this program goes on, it's lifelong. Somebody tried to award track sometimes it's not a scout anymore and you get out of the way, but He's, yeah, he's the example. This is a lifelong thing. So, any other hot topics, questions that people have? All right, brings us to recognizing your youth. Absolutely. Instant recognize. Instant. Why do you think we gave beads? That's our instant roundtable recognition. So if you don't have, if you managed to sneak in and you didn't get your cord and your bead, just get it. We'll get you. Don't forget. Don't really do it. Cool. Make sure you wear your uniform. I know. I have a little bit of All we get are special, special beads mm -hmm. for being late. <laughs> 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 Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole you no know, hazing this guy has that's just you. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It, no, we're, we're gonna talk about this guy. Yeah, no, we're not gonna hang you upside down and <laughs> we're fine. So okay. uh, I guess parting <laughs> thoughts unless anybody else has any thoughts they wanted to throw in quick. Um, just make sure to check out the training post items. Yes, back here. Training post items, a little bit of food left, but uh, I think we had a good discussion today about all the things that we can do to keep our boys and youth active in the summer. Uh, put the fun in it. Always remember it's fun. Uh, for the, the scouts, always remember that we're trying to develop leaders. So give them a chance to do the planning and the organizing and the leading uh, as much as you can without them killing someone else or themselves, uh, or maybe or harming. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind as you're doing coming into the summer and doing some planning and just try to try some new things that maybe you haven't done before and heard about tonight. So with that, yes sir. When we mentioned the award, most of them have to take a participation in the final round or four round tables. So attendance is important. Yeah. So do you take a role for that? So, you know. Yes, we do. So, uh, yes, Although we do. on your card, you can write your attendance date for round table on there. So. And nobody's going to check. It's on your honor system. So, you can just go to so we are taking attendance for our troop and individual attendance awards for the next district banquet. Yep. So. So make sure you get your name on the show. Otherwise, you're not going to count. That's right. With that, the scout is loyal. The scout is loyal to those whom loyalty is due. 
When we think about being loyal, we think of standing by our country and our state. We are loyal to our church and our family. We are loyal to our school. When we join Boy Scouts, we pledge our loyalty to our patrol and troop. In Cub Scouts, the law of the pack was that the Cub helps the pack go and the pack helps the Cub Scout grow. In Boy Scouts, we teach help, we teach, we each help the patrol and troop and the patrol and troop helps us. That's the key with loyalty. It's not a one-way street. Your patrol and troop are only as good as you make them. You get out of scouts what you put in it. You give loyalty to those whom loyalty is due, and they will return loyalty to you. All right, as we're closing, uh, I think the big sign-up sheet is still on that back table. And I think there's three spots left open for next oh. month, and we just might not let anybody go. Yeah. Until those three spots are filled. But we have some people we can volunteer. Yeah. Tom, Tom you told me in passing that she was going to sign up for something, but she was going to get you back. So, so she didn't sign up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think, I know it was a speaking. So part. we have the little pre opening activity, just something fun to do as people arrive. We have the flag ceremony as ornate or simple as you want it to be, the invocation, and like Mark did, a simple two-minute skill drill, so some, something fun. And that was an awesome two-minute skill drill, too. I loved the night. We should have put a timer on it. It might have been right at two minutes. Yeah, that's right. Go to Mark. Anyway, thank you for coming tonight, and we'll see you in a month. There's more snacks back Make there. sure that you sign the attendance sheet if uh, you didn't get a chance to already. And if you didn't get the handouts, come up, make sure you come up here and get that. Oh, feedback. We, yeah. we love feedback.